Okay, before we get started, I just have to kind of vent here for a second. I'm kind of sick and tired of people saying they have these cool, rare, special computers, and they contact me just trying to get into my inbox. Now, these guys contact me now. They have an iBook G4 clamshell. Come on, there is no such thing. The iBook clamshell design only had a G3 in it. Look, I'll show you. See, right there, PowerPC G4. Wait, what the shit? Hey guys, how are you all doing? Really, that's just great. You know, I'm doing pretty great today too because <laughs> while the guards are asleep, at least I, I think they're asleep, I decided to take on another personal project. This right here in the protective force field condom unit is the only one to exist on the planet. There might be another one on Mars, but I'm not sure yet. Elon Musk, you gotta hurry up. This looks like your everyday iBook G3 clamshell. And that's because it probably is. I have no idea what's different about it. Let's open it up. But I could probably just slip it out. Just like that, there you go. Work smarter, not harder, okay. Styrofoam, oh. The maids are gonna just have a field day with this episode. Oh my gosh, they're gonna have to clean the layer, all these frickin' styrofoam pellets. Here we go. Oh, that is pretty. Hey, would you look at that? The color kind of matches my air filter quality check background light. That's very nice. Remember, as long as it's blue, we're okay. Yeah, the Blueberry iBook G3. One of the original colors for the first generation iBook. I have never, well, I think once before I've seen one of these in person. I absolutely love that color and the nice rubber finish. I'm gonna dust you off some more. And of course, because it's Apple, carrying handle on the back, you gotta have those little features. But word on the street is that this is a special machine. It was given to me, or temporarily loaned to me by Das Dude and Greg Rutke from Rutke Mods. If you have ever used a patcher to install a newer version of macOS on an older Mac that shouldn't be running that version of macOS, you probably have Das Dude to thank for that. And he worked with Greg Rutke on this particular mod. But I have never looked at it before. This is the first, oh, product placement, okay. That, that this whole thing was just a scam for free advertising. I see how it is. You know what? Screw your contract. I'm done. I'm leaving. I just realized I have nowhere to go, so we might as well just continue this. Okay, I don't remember that being in the picture you sent me earlier. Maybe I'm just not an observant person. Well, at first glance, I gotta say, it's a really pretty machine, but something looks a little bit different. So, I've been briefed, so I'm not totally clueless walking into this one, but this is really cool shit. First of all, it just looks cool with the whole translucent case where you can see on the inside, but if you've ever seen one of these before, you may notice typically this is more opaque. So it looks like the shielding has been removed to accommodate for the changes. So uh, I'm sure we'll talk about that more in a bit. But yeah, visually that just looks freaking awesome. We probably need to power this up somehow. Oh shit. Oh, oh. Okay, there's still battery life on this. Like how? How is that possible? It's been sitting in storage for like a billion years. Okay, I was not expecting that to actually do something. <laughs> it's kind of quiet. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's louder than a typical iBook. But that's probably because of the different cooling system. We have our old friend, the yo-yo power cord, where you just take the charger and go like that. Oh. Honestly, I thought it was like on a spring wheel thing. You actually have to wrap it around the puck. Okay, well, you can see how much of a novice I am at this. Yeah, I've never owned one of these. I mean, I, mean, I own a power book, but, or excuse me, an iBook, but it did not come with the first party charger. Well, I am not used to that fan noise coming out of there. <laughs> That's kind of cool, uh, literally. 
Uh, so let me just, uh, just gonna finish unraveling this just, you know, for another three months and then we'll be good to go. Okay, let's plug her in. Okay, well, this is the first thing someone has loaned me that hasn't exploded in my face in the last couple weeks. Yeah, unlike that G5, that thing just went to town and went boom. Whoa. Whoa! Well, isn't that not Colin, so there's, there's Das Dude just kind of hanging out right there. There's Greg himself. Look at that. He made a little account for me. Ken. Yeah, with the uh, older color scheme of our Computer Clan logo. That's pretty cool. I claim G4. I dig it. It's running Leopard. Now, according to my dossier, let's just call it, yes, I was provided a dossier. This is a version of Leopard that is slightly modified. Apparently it's running beta versions of drivers. Like it's using drivers from the beta version of Leopard from WWDC 06. That's fascinating. Okay, password time, let's see. I don't remember the password, so I have to bust out the dossier again. Let's have a peek. It's the word crazy with a K. Now, what kind of asshole would spell crazy with a K? That makes no sense. Here we go. Ah, the old Leopard Aurora wallpaper. Very pretty. Oh, nice. Our Connections wallpaper, Connections 2 is the name of that piece. That is a TRS-80 Model 4 motherboard. Fun fact, that is what I photographed. Oh, 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 this isn't a sticker that's actually on the computer. It's a, it's like a standalone sticker that I can, is it a sticker? Looks like a sticker. Quacks like a sticker. Well, that's cool. Then I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that up somewhere. Like, uh, I'll, I'll find a place <laughs> in the lair. Cool. I like how nice this clicks. Like, this is a really good condition iBook. My clicker button is like totally squishy, and like my keys are kind of squishy. But like, this feels really nice. So it looks like we have Leopard, which we're running now, Tiger, and OS 9.2.2. Wow, man, we're gonna have a lot of things to experiment with. I don't even know where to begin. But first, let's do the whole Steve Jobs thing and check the processor information like he did with the Pentium 4 in front of the audience. Good times. Uh, yeah, 500 megahertz PowerPC G4. So it's an iBook G3 clamshell with a G4 processor in it. Hence why the fan is louder, because it needs to cool the system. Tiny ass little fan from an iBook G4. I do have one of those as well, particularly the 12 inch. And Greg was the person who worked on the cooling system. Colin Dostu did more of the chip stuff to get the actual G4 in here. But yeah, Greg took a, this tiny little fan from an iBook G4, threw it in here, and then put a heat sink assembly in here, which is causing a bit of this bulge. And that particular heat sink is from a 2008 MacBook. A white. Early 2008 MacBook, to be more precise. Let's power it back up. Watch the fan go to town. Woo! That little guy makes a lot of noise. And as we can see, it's running. Now the fan speed will eventually be regulated, probably. And uh, I had to put a resistor in line with it to keep it from spinning. Uh, at a ridiculously fast and loud speed. The shielding is removed. I actually don't remember why the shielding was removed. I need to check the dossier, but I'm sure there's a reason for it. Now, I wasn't wanting to modify the case like this, um, but the inner shield was hitting the fan. And honestly, this looks pretty cool and very unassuming when the case is closed. Because the shielding is removed, that also removes some of the thermal properties because the frickin' shielding had two purposes. One, to help control interference. But two, it also acted as a heat sink. So if you take that out, your shit's gonna get hot. It's pretty cool. Let's take a look at some more information here. Actually, I just got a message on the old telephone from Greg while shooting this. Uh, he said, don't worry about the cracks, which, yeah, you know. Oh yeah, there's some more there. Oh. Uh, we'll take a deeper look at the damage soon. But overall, it is good condition. And he also said that he had to adjust the keyboard in a way to fit the fan in here. I didn't really notice. Oh, oh, it's bowed. It's kind of curved like this. Yeah, so he could fit the fan in there. 
He calls it the ergonomic keyboard. Sure, it's just like that Microsoft keyboard, which I could never freaking use. Like, oh, that just confuses me. I know it's ergonomics, but whatever. That explains the little, like, bulge action going on there. Oh yeah, I also think I <laughs> just remembered why it sounds so much louder. It's not just because the fan is louder, it's because it actually has a fan. The original iBook didn't have a fan. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, um, that's true. Steve Jobs was not a fan of fans, but when you shove a G4 in this thing with a removed cooling system with the heat sink and the shield, yeah, you need a fan and that bitch ain't quiet. Here's the battery. Here we can kind of see through the frosted plastic, it does say iBook Lithium. And yeah, here's that little bit of a better look at the keyboard. It's kind of curved outward a little bit. It feels pretty darn cool. Like I don't feel barely, just barely any warmth coming out of this thing. Pretty sweet. Yeah, I'm now like super aware of cracks ever since he texted me that, but you know, that's all right. There's a few more cracks here, probably just from the stress of the mod. Oh, specifically the heat sink assembly that's in here. It's causing a lot of pressure, peer pressure. No, just kidding. It wouldn't succumb to peer pressure. That's just stupid. None of your preferred networks are available. Gee, I wonder why. It could be because you're 10 stories underground, you friggin' iBook. Yeah, uh, the more I read the dossier, the more I learn more shit. Yeah, the battery was working because it was rebuilt. We're gonna be replacing these cells in it with these updated newer versions of the same cell. Very impressive. I am not used to older computers holding a charge, but you know, when you take care of shit, tune it up, it works pretty well. Yeah, connection failed. Yeah, I may have to make a WPA network to make that work like I have done before, but I really don't care about that right now. We all know what the internet looks like. You know, let's uh, take a look at what else is on this thing in terms of hardware. 64 megs of RAM and one DIMM and 512 on the other. And what do we have here? So it looks like a 64 gig something or other. It's probably an SSD. Well, it is kind of speedy. So yeah, SSD, 64 gig from Samsung. Yeah, it's gotta be an SSD, duh, because I don't hear any mechanics, so pretty nice. Let's have a look at uh, software that's on here. Yeah, we have 10.4 Fox WebKit. Oh yes, it does have some developer thingies on here, doesn't it? I did not mean to open preview, go away. That poor, it's called 104 Fox, but that thing doesn't really look like a fox and whatever it is, he got stuck in the planet. Must hurt. Nah, it looks more like a cheetah or something. But hey, what do I know about animals? I don't have any windows down here. Can't really see them. Looks like we have two versions of Photoshop. Geekbench, of course. Thank you, I was hoping Geekbench would be on here. Ah, the PowerPC app store, very nice. Onyx for changing up shit. Well, I might use that and screw stuff up. That'll be fun. Geekbench, let's have a look at Geekbench. I'm glad, Greg and Colin, you put this on here because uh, it's kind of cool to Geekbench a mod, right? So it's in tryout mode. It's limited to running 32-bit benchmarks. Oh, what a shame. Luckily, we're using a 32-bit processor, so I think we're okay. PowerPC 32-bit, run benchmarks. What do we got? We are 10 minutes and 20 seconds into the benchmark. Hopefully we're done soon. I'm excited to see what score this gets. And also, just as a side note, I'm not saying the comparison I'm looking at on the everymac.com website is exactly the same, but for the original iBook G3 clamshell, on their website, their Geekbench 2 score clocked in at 155. That's with a PowerPC 750, the G3, at 300 megahertz. So let's see where this computer lies compared to 155. Now remember, the big difference is obviously it's a G4, not a G3. It's a faster clock speed too, but there's also an SSD in here, which I'm guessing will help a lot. And boom, we clocked in at 304. Processor integer performance, 385. Floating point, 342. Memory score, 194. Stream, 117. Single threaded vector stream copy, 200 megabytes per second. What does this score mean? Yes, do tell us. Geekbench scores are calibrated using the 2003 interface base with a, oh, the thousand points, okay. So the baseline is the entry level Power Mac G5, one that doesn't explode in my face, and that's at a thousand points. So essentially three and a third of these computers put together is a entry level G5 in terms of a Geekbench score, I guess. Uh, 
if that's the way math works, which it probably isn't. Very nice. This one got a slightly higher score. It's almost a 13, and this one's still at 7.24. So yeah, uh, as you can tell, it, it, is, it is a big difference. This one finished um, well over, um, what was it, at least a minute faster. Well, let's do some real world shit. CS4, I think that was the first version I used. Let's check the performance of this beach. We need a file, we need a picture, right? There's gotta be, oh, um, okay. Uh, herp -a -derp -a -derp. Well, I'm sure this one didn't expire because I think Adobe released these to the public. I don't really remember. Oh, the iDisk, remember the iDisk, good times. There we go, there, we have an image we can use in Photoshop. So yeah, it looks like we're getting a little bit of window lag here. Is it always like that or is it just because we're opening Photoshop? I'll figure that out soon. What's new in Photoshop? Hmm, yeah, if you time travel, it's pretty new shit. Go to the past. Oh yes, all the little inspector windows, the wireframe window movements, the bright white UI. Memories. Actually, really not memories for me. I didn't start in the CS2 days. But anyway, let's drag my photo in here. Or not. Maybe that's not how it works. Okay. We'll, we'll do this the old-fashioned way. We'll go to open. There we go. There's my wallpaper inside of Adobe Photoshop CS2. Window lag isn't too terrible there. Looks like we are getting a little bit of tearing but that's probably because, I'm gonna consult the dossier to make sure. Leopard is probably not running on here with full graphics acceleration. Now there's no table of contents in my magic dossier, but that is gonna be my assumption. And that's probably why there were some beta drivers on here to try to help with that. Graphics displays, resolution, quartz extreme not supported. Well, there you go. That would be one of the reasons why the Drawing of the windows is a little bit slow. I clam G4, I dig it. That's a nice name for the computer. Very fitting, it explains what it is pretty darn well. Let's perform an operation. What shall we do? Let's do some adjustments, yeah? Let's do some color balance. This is actually not what I want to do at all. Let's try some different adjustments. Hue and saturation, that's what I wanted. Let's say this image is way too freaking colorful. Let's make it black and white. There you go, that is, that's decently responsive. Turn the preview on and off. Apply that. There we go. Can we do F to go full screen with that? Yeah, looks like we can. Oh, that's pretty sweet. I don't know, man. I feel like we should blur it. It's too crisp. Let's take a look at a Gaussian blur. Crank that radius up. Oh, yeah, that draws pretty quickly. Not too shabby there. Boom, hit OK. There we go, well that works just Pretty quickly, nice. You know what, let's go into Tiger. Let's see how well this thing performs in Tiger. Oh, I hope I have a user account I can log into. Ha <laughs> ha, nervous laughter. All right, we're gonna reboot. Bing. Hold down that option key. Okay, once it loads up, let's go to Tiger. Click, boom. Ah, the old Aqua stuff. Chrome logo. Actually, that, they had some of that in Leopard, but yeah, it started kind of going away with like Lion and stuff. Well, Lion went real skew-morphic, <laughs> but then uh, yeah, it started getting phased out more. The pinstripes though, and like the brushed metal, that was in Tiger. That did not make it to Leopard. Anyway, thank you, Greg, for making an account on Tiger as well. You know, that, that wallpaper looks nice with the whole blue look. Yeah, I dig it. We're really blue here. Oh, nice, he put my other wallpaper on here too. And that wallpaper is a vectorization of a colored photo I shot of my first PC motherboard. So that's where that's from. Origin stories. Yeah, just from seeing the dock animate in, it looks like things are smoother. Let's have a look. It's a little bit better. It's a little bit better. It's definitely not 100% perfect, but you know, what do you expect? The transparency shows up. We got the brushed metal here. Menus, yeah, just a little laggy, not very terrible, but you got the drop shadows rendering on there and stuff. That's great. Let's go to about this Mac. Yes, 10.4.11, which is Tiger. Pretty sweet. Oh, the dashboard. Remember that? They killed that in Catalina. It's going away. First introduced with 
Tiger. Okay, now let's try classic macOS on here. We have OS 9.2.2, let's boot into there. I'm guessing that will just scream, because <laughs> uh, the graphics are very different in OS 9 compared to OS 10. You know, I was just thinking, why does that load so quickly? Because when I have multiple systems on my older computers, it takes a while for all the other icons to show up. Duh, this thing has an SSD in it. <laughs> I'm not used to that, that's so fast. All right, we go to classic. Here we go. Welcome to macOS. It looks like it defaulted the, oh, there's the brightness, it's back. Holy shit. <laughs> I've never seen the extensions just move so quick. Oh, actually, I think this is the first time I've used OS 9 on an SSD. That's pretty awesome. Now this, uh, this uh, did not have opaque window movement, so you just had the wireframe, but hey, at least the frame rate is high. <laughs> Let's see what was in this picture. Oh yeah, it looks like you're running Facebook via Classilla. I've not used Classilla. I'm currently not connected to any, <laughs> I'm currently not connected to any interwebs, but I could change that. I can make a guest network that this would be compatible with. Yes, I cannot load up anything right now. But yeah, I've never used this before on OS 9. It'll be cool to browse the web on OS 9 because I can't say I've done that much, especially on a G4 modded iBook G3 clamshell. Okay, let me tweak some network stuff and see what we can do. Well, I just won the Idiot of the Year award again. Yeah, I already had a guest network up and running. I just forgot about it. And I forgot what the password was anyway, so I just reset that. So, forgetting about that, let's uh, connect to the Wi-Fi. Wow, I'm a noob, I don't even know. Oh yeah, it's probably in the control strip, huh? Uh, yeah, where's the thing to do the thing? There it is. Oh, it's not showing up on here anyway. What? Bummer. Ah, I just received another message. Isn't this fun? This is what tech video logs are all about. It's all in the moment. All right, so let's see. Either turn off Wi-Fi security or plug into Ethernet. Remember, it only supports max 128-bit WP encryption. The easiest thing to do is if you have an Airport Express, settle into bridge mode and connect through Ethernet or connect it to another Mac using the sharing, the internet sharing of the connection. I connected it to my iMac through Ethernet to update 10.4 Fox. Okay, Ethernet it is. Bing! Yes, I could use the internet sharing feature with another Mac, absolutely, but this cable should be long enough to run to the Airport Extreme Base Station, which Apple doesn't make anymore. Hmm, sadness. Plug it in. Click. We are now hooked into the Airport Extreme. Let's have a peek. No, shit! I Frickin' menu changed when I was trying to click. Don't you hate it when an interface does that? You're like, or like a website, you're about to click on a button and then an ad that's like a thousand pixels tall just pushes down everything and you click on the wrong shit. Yeah, what do we call that? Bullshit. That is 100% pure pork bullshit. Ethernet connected. Well, that's a good sign. Let's open up 10.4 Fox, version 7400. <laughs> okay, so let's go to an awesome website that at the time of this tech video log, we're actually working on tweaking a little bit. Thanks to its ancient foundation, it'll probably run just fine on any old system. It's not like it really uses a lot of super modern technologies. Beautiful. Yes, I could already tell, judging by the horizontal scroll bar, it's gonna be way off here. It is uh, certainly not responsive. But even if it was, I don't even think it would matter. I don't know if this version of 10.4 Fox can parse a responsive site, but hey, I could be wrong. Let's zoom this out. Get a little bigger. A little bigger. A little smaller. There you go. There you go. There's our website on here. Awesome. Okay, let's go back into OS 9 because browsing the web on OS 9 on this G4 mod, ooh, that's gonna be fun. That's next. All right, back in OS 9. Connect via Ethernet built in. There we go, welcome to Classilla. You are running the most current version of Classilla. 933, thanks for feeding the fossil. Let's browse some stuff. Nice, yeah, let's go to apple.com first of all. I think that'd be kind of fun. On OS 9. Security warning, yeah. Here we go, this is the uh, current Apple website. On OS 9 with Classilla. Beautiful, there you go. Looks great. 
Let's go to the computer clan. Dot com. Our website isn't uber fancy, so it will probably render 80% just fine. Or not. <laughs> okay. Can't quite tell what it's trying to do. Looks like the rainbow sticky header thing still shows up. Yeah. This renders pretty much nothing on our website. It does have the top fill here, and the sticky header does stay there when I scroll. That's, that's something, I guess. Okay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the ultimate benchmark, the ultimate test to see if any mod is even worthy of existing. I'm about to put this machine through one hell of a benchmark. FileMaker Plus 2.1. Oh yeah, yeah, if a computer can handle this, it can handle anything. Nam du champ. Well, he called me a champ, that's really nice. Wait a minute, this is the French version, what? Hang on, I can't do this. I don't speak French. Whoa, whoa, slow down. I can't read, oh my gosh, I can't read the credits. It's going too fast. Is that because of the mod or is that just because this is really old software? Something looks like it's overclocked. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not sure what's really causing that, but that is hilarious. Um, I'm guessing that's the Claris dog, I don't know. Is Claris, uh, you know, I'm kind of just paying homage to FileMaker rebranding back to the name Claris. I actually did a previous Crazy Ken episode about old versions of FileMaker to kind of pay tribute and homage to Claris. So go check that out. But yeah, this is French. I don't read French. Quitter! I'm a quitter! <laughs> yeah, I should probably learn French. I have FileMaker 2 on here though. And here we go. Notes on this template. There we go. I, look at that frame rate. This just screams. So the benchmark has officially passed. You know, I like looking on the back of these things, just uh, they put the jellyfish wallpaper on there and they put different images on there depending on what computer you get. Apple Computer Incorporated and a family number. That just sounds so family friendly. So I'm gonna open this baby up here. And on the inside, sign it. Everyone that worked on this mod or presented this mod is going to sign it. It's kind of like the Stanley Cup trophy for techies. I say uh, right here, right on the jellyfish. There we are, Greg and Colin. Boom, you're next. Get your names on here. Thank you very much. There you go, the Crazy Ken curse will live forever in your machine. <laughs> okay, so I also must mention, if you wanna see more of the process behind how Colin and Greg put this together, check out the other videos because it was a multi-step procedure, as you might imagine. Honestly, they deserve all the credit. They did all the work. I am but a humble foot soldier who is presenting this beautiful machine to you. So please do check them out. And thank you so much for tagging along with me. This was a lot of fun. Catch the crazy and pass it on. <laughs>